Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 and FI23 conference call of Century Inca Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Shooting your sessions during the conference call an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Purwangi Jain from Valorum Advisors. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to you all. My name is Purvangi Jain from Valorum Advisors. We represent the Investor Relations of Century Enca Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's fourth quarter of FI24 earnings conference call. Before we begin, let me mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's con call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risk and uncertainties, which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's belief as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to the management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings conference call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Now let me introduce you to the management participating in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for their opening remarks. We have with us Mr. Suresh Sogani, Managing Director, and Mr. Krishna Gopal Lacharya, Chief Financial Officer. Without any further delay, I request Mr. Sogani to start with his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all to our Q4 FY24 earnings conference call. Let me first brief you on the operational highlights for the fourth quarter of FY24, after which our CFO, Mr. Larsaria, will brief you on the financials. The overall demand for NTCF shows slight improvement, but growth remains muted. The demand for two-wheeler tires in India is improving, in contrast, demand for commercial vehicle tires remains flat, and tractor tire demand is declining due to subpar monsoon in the last year. While tire exports are rising, they are still lower than past levels. We are observing an increasing trend of regionalization in commercial vehicles. Overcapacity in China is leading to dumping into China, into India, impacting demand and margins. Post Diwali, there has been a pickup in demand for NFI. However, concerns remain due to overall lower textile demand, especially in rural areas and overcapacity in China leading to dumping into India, which affects local demand and margins. Despite these challenges, the focus remains on increasing the share of value-added products in the portfolio and reduce costs to improve competitiveness and profitability. On the raw material front, capital item prices hovered consistently around 1690 per metric ton whereas electricity rates remain at an elevated level. Now to update on you, you on our CAPEX projects, for the financial year FY24, there has been a total cash outflow of rupees 115 crores towards ongoing CAPEX programs. Pinning capacity of polyester yarn for PTCF commissioned in March 24. With this, we have completed all major CAPEX projects. We will now initiate the process for PTCF approval with the tire companies. I now hand over to Mr. Krishna Latveria to brief you on financial performance. Thank you, Sodanji. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Let me start with financial results for fourth quarter of financial year 2024. The operating revenue stood at 469 crores, remained flattish on year-on-year -year basis. EBITDA for the quarter stood at 34 crores, which grew by almost 49% year-on-year. EBITDA margin were reported at 7.21%. Profit after tax was around 20 crores, representing an increase of 40% year on year. Fat margins were at 4.33% for the quarter. NTCF sales for Q4 FI24 decreased by around 13% year on year to INR 216 crores, while NFI sales for the same period increased by 14% year-on-year to INR 238 crores. Now coming to the results for the financial year 24, 
the operating revenue stood at 100, uh, 1,744 crores, which decreased by almost 16% year on year. EBITDA stood at 83 crores, which declined by around 42% year on year. EBITDA margin for the same period was 4.75%. Profit after tax was INR 43 crores, which declined by around 53% year on year, and PAT margin was reported at 2.45%. The NPCF sales for this period decreased by 22% to INR 827 crores, while NFI sales decreased by almost 7% to INR 850 crores. With this, we open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you. We will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We have the first question on the line of Faisal Hawa from HG Hawaiian Company. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, sir, uh, what is the, uh, our estimate for uh, coming year? Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Faisal, would request you to kindly go off the speakerphone. We cannot hear you very clearly. Just a second. What is our estimate for the uh, coming year's uh, you know revenue growth, and uh, is, uh, what what is the kind of uh, you know uh, movement you see from the tire companies uh, this year uh, as, as regards to you know uh, new approvals and new revenue coming in, and uh, secondly, do we have any kind of surplus land which we may be giving to uh, Century Textiles uh, for any kind of uh, redevelopment, etc. So coming to the first question, while we do not give any forward-looking statements, uh, we expect uh, revenue growth uh, uh, of about between 10 to 15 percent, uh, maybe if the markets are good, even up to 20 percent. But that will depend on how the markets uh, behave uh, for the entire year, as also the pressure from uh, on imp of imports from China uh, in both the segments. So uh, we are optimistic about uh, the revenue growth, and uh, uh, we'll see how it uh, progresses quarter on quarter. Uh, as regards the second question, uh, we do not have any surplus land which has been given to any other company for development. Uh, our land at uh, Baruch is on ownership basis and uh, being utilized only for our manufacturing activities. Our land at uh, Pune is only for on a lease basis and also again utilized only for manufacturing activities. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Vipal Kumar Shah from Sumangal Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So my question is, uh, uh, when will this uh, expanded capacity will come into production? Uh, means uh, can we uh, means what type of uh, production increase can we expect over next financial year uh, in this financial year? So if you can throw some light, it will be very helpful. So our uh, new capacity uh, of our expanded capacity of nylon tire cord fabric has already been is being utilized fully. Uh, we have only <coughs> adjusted it with. Uh, stopping some of the old facilities to get better uh, efficiency gains as well as better quality products. Uh, and if the volume, um, if the markets do improve, uh, uh, which uh, we are hopeful of, uh, the <coughs> capacity is that uh, the idle capacity will also increase, will be will utilized. Uh, for the polyester tire cord fabric, we have just commissioned at the end of March and uh, as informed earlier, this being a very technical product goes through a rigorous uh, approval process on the tire companies. So in the interim, before we get approval from tire companies uh, to do commercial supplies, it will go through a process of supplying them trial lots 
uh, which will be converted into tires and then that goes through a very rigorous approval process. We will be selling yarns uh, uh, in the market in, as polyester yarns uh, in the interim. So we hope to utilize that facility uh, completely uh, during the next uh, FI25. Uh, so approximately it would be, uh, again, we do not give any forward-looking statement, but assuming that the markets are good, uh, 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 close to between 5 to 10 percent volume growth can be expected. From polyester lines, right? I mean, we on the total total volume growth. Total volume growth. So, for uh, nylon tire code, what is the uh, uh, capacity addition and what was the capacity utilization last year, sir? Uh, we report our results only in, as synthetic yarns, and uh, for competitive reasons, we do not uh, give the the volume breakup. Uh, we have already give, only give the uh, revenue breakup as an additional information. So we will only be talking about the total capacities. Yeah, so what was the total capacity utilization uh, last year, sir? Uh, it was close to around uh, 80%. 80%. And we have added roughly 30% extra capacity, right? No, 80% is on the added annualized capacity. So uh, we, I mean, capacities have increased over various quarters. Some have, some have commissioned in the last year, some have commissioned in the current financial year. So when we say 80 percent, it is on the average uh, capacities of uh, the quart of all the four quarters uh, for FI24. So it is a little bit confusing. So what is, uh, as on today, what is our total installed capacity uh, after this? Uh, New lines have become obvious. Yeah, it, is, it is about 92,000 uh, tons per annum. 92,000 uh, tons per annum. So, if hypothetically, if demand is there, we can sell up to 92,000 tons, right, sir? Yes, yes. If if the markets are good, we can uh, go up to the entire 92,000 tons per annum. And uh, uh, this, uh, what is the status of your our, uh, demand for anti-dumping duty? No, there is no anti-dumping duty on either of the products. But uh, we, uh, we, uh, we have written to the government, no? I think we have initiated the process or not? We, we keep following up and we, through our associations, uh, we keep representing. But the revenue, I mean, the, the department, uh, or the, uh, the finance department has not been uh, po uh, responding positively in, even after the DGTR recommendation, not only in our case, but in many other cases as well. So we keep pursuing it, but there is no anti-dumping duty as, as of now. And sir, my last question is regarding your notes of this electric, uh, reversal of electricity charges of five crores. So would you elaborate? It will be, uh, means I didn't uh, understand. So Maharashtra, we have uh, uh, electricity subsidy of two rupees per uh, unit. And uh, in uh, the Maharashtra textile subsidy, which was uh, for the period uh, uh, 23 to uh, 2023 to 2028, uh, in the new policy, they restricted the total uh, subsidy to 40 lakh rupees per month. So they kept two rupees limit, uh, two rupees per unit, but uh, restricted it to 40 lakh rupees per month. Uh, subsequently, in the month of uh, March, they revised the policy and they restored the sub subsidy back to two rupees per unit without any cap uh, on the total subsidy. Because of that, uh, in uh, uh, December quarter, when this policy uh, came in, uh, uh, we reversed uh, uh, five crore rupees, uh, which was uh, subsidy accounted for, and the same subsidy was restored back to our account uh, in March. So in um, uh, March quarter, we have this additional uh, uh, profit of 5 crore rupees, uh, which pertain to the period uh, up to December. So that 5 crore uh, will not be in current year, right? So uh, the, uh, on year-on-year on -year basis, there is no change. So uh, there was a uh, charge in Q3, and there was a reversal in Q4. Oh. Year on basis uh, or full year basis, uh, there was full subsidy which was there at two rupees, which was accounted in our books. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you.
Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We have the next question from the line of Pradeep Rawat from Yogya Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is regarding the NFI segment. As we can see, the industry is not faring well. And we can see some of the organized players going through distress sales. Are we looking for acquiring such players? Uh, no, we are, as of now there is no proposal to acquire any uh, stressed assets or a <clears throat> stressed company. Uh, we are concentrating and focusing on improving the value addition within our own portfolio as well as reducing the cost to become more competitive. But uh, if there is something, it will uh, it will come as an announcement. But there is nothing uh, which we can uh, uh, declare that that is under consideration. Okay. And my next question is regarding our PTCS facility. So, what kind of ROC are we envisaging for the specific facility? So, uh, generally, we work with an ROC or uh, payback period of uh, around five years. So, uh, between five to seven years, if, if the project is uh, or if it is above our cost of capital, we consider those projects. So, you can consider that uh, there will be a payback period of uh, around five to seven years. Okay, so in earlier calls you said that the PTCA facility would generate close to 100 crore of revenue. Yes. And the EBITDA margin would be somewhere around? We, we don't uh, uh, give any specific uh, numbers on EBITDA margin for any uh, specific pro uh, product. Okay. We report, uh, on a consolidated basis uh, for our entire business as one segment. Uh, so it would be somewhere around NTCS margins or uh, it would be higher than that? So uh, generally uh, uh, it would depend on the market condition and uh, uh, specific, it will be very difficult to say what, uh, what would be uh, the comparable margins between the two products. Okay, and so uh, what are we like planning for in uh, forward integration into technical textile segment? We we are looking at technical textiles because that's an exciting area and a growth opportunity, and some of our products uh, already actually even the tire cord fabric is a part of technical textiles uh, uh, in that definition of Mobitech Mobitech. So we are looking at opportunities to uh, to get into specified segments uh, uh, since uh, our base yarn is uh, suitable for certain technical textiles. And uh, once we are uh, have decided on what to enter and at up to what level, which up to what value, part of value chain we have to get into, that will be announced as a, if we have to enter a major or incur a major capex on that. So that will be announced as a part of uh, our regular uh, uh, reporting and also to the stock exchanges. Yes, sir. Why am I am that asking from you this is that because we have so much of capital uh, available with us. So any plan on the drawing board uh, on your side for uh, such expansion right now? Any anything like in which context can you tell us? As I said, I mean, we, we cannot declare before it is uh, finalized or uh, uh, approved by the board. So, as, as, But we we can only state that it is an area that is of interest to us, and we are looking at it in a very detailed manner to see which segment to participate in, because that is going to be a growth area for the textile overall segments uh, in India. Okay, and then last question is regarding our NTCS expansion we did earlier. Uh, so even though the market of NTCS is not uh, showing good sign or it is shrinking due to radialization that you have earlier uh, explained, uh, so why did we expand it in, it in this segment? So one of the reasons for expansion was uh, that uh, 
some of our machines, particularly at uh, uh, Pune, were aging and had crossed 30 years or close to 30 years of uh, operating uh, life. So to prepare for any quality related or any issues with respect to productivity from these machines, uh, uh, that was one of the reasons to expand and we have expanded that capacity at Baruch, which is a more cost effective location. And second was, uh, uh, there is still, uh, while we are, uh, we, we had anticipated that radialization will happen, uh, uh, one of the things which, uh, uh, which still has, an uh, has a uh, potential to, uh, to take the seg growth the segment of the exports. And exports have shown a very good uh, improvement uh, in FY22. Unfortunately, the uh, Ukraine war started and uh, there was a sudden dip in the last two years. So that was the two main reasons and we could see that the, even the tire companies were uh, uh, were expanding their uh, uh, tires, which utilizes uh, anti-safe as a reinforcement. So these were the three reasons that we had done that. Uh, but as I mentioned in the earlier question, we are already utilizing and these are more efficient. So the efficiency gains and quality gains are already uh, flowing to the company. And uh, if uh, the geopolitical issues and uh, uh, other issues uh, are uh, more favorable, uh, we are hopeful that uh, uh, the complete capacities or a very large part of the capacity uh, will be fully utilized. Yeah, great, great. And uh, so just to follow up on that, uh, so we won't be expanding in NTCS from now on, or we will be like uh, like you said, the capacity was old, so we have done some uh, modernization capex. So uh, going forward, we won't be needing some modernization tactics, am I right? We, we would have certain uh, uh, certain capexes which are at a low scale, not uh, of the amount that was uh, uh, announced to the stock exchange and approved by the board. So some uh, modernization and some replacement capex uh, would happen every year, but it won't be a scale that we did. And yes, we will, uh, till the time that the NTCF shows that it is growing and it shows potential, we are not going to expand our entity capacity. Yeah, okay. Thank, thank you and all the best. Thank I'll you. I'll jump back the queue. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We have the next question from the line of Shrutisha, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So actually, I had a question on the realization side. So we have seen in this financial year that our realization have been declining. So it, it would be great if you could give an idea of the trend, what's going on and going further, what we can expect. And it would be great if you could uh, give a segmentalized uh, idea on the realization side. So uh, realization in both the segments is also a function of uh, the underlying raw materials. Uh, and uh, over the okay. compared to an average rental capital income price of FY23 versus FY24, there has been a decline. So that is one of the reasons that uh, realizations uh, look low because uh, 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 this uh, normally, either in case of NTC, if there is a, a mechanism to pass through, and NFI also the prices adjust to according to the raw material prices. Second is, as mentioned, there is a uh, uh, import pressure from, uh, uh, from China because of the overcapacity in China as well as lower domestic demand in China and which has suppressed the uh, prices as well as the margins. So that uh, are the two, two main reasons uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we report our results in a single segment. So uh, uh, we, we have given the overall numbers both in terms of volumes as well as uh, the margins and that is what we can share for uh, at, uh, in the, uh, and for the uh, this conference call. Okay, got it. So, congratulations on the numbers and thanks for the opportunity. All the very best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Pradeep Rawat from Yogi Capital. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, so I would like to know what were the capital item prices for the fourth quarter, uh, for the last quarter and this quarter. 
So uh, this quarter uh, was around uh, 1690 level, uh, $1690 per metric ton. And uh, in uh, last quarter it was, uh, uh, I will just give you the average. Last quarter's average was 1645. 1645. And what was the exit capital account prices for this quarter? Uh, it's, it's a similar level, 1690. That that was the average for. Okay, so based on the average prices, so we would have some inventory gains uh, in the margins, right? Yes. Yes. But, but that is a regular part of uh, the uh, our business. Uh, if prices move up, we gain slightly. Uh, not in uh, NTCO because there it is pass through. But in NFI, uh, on uh, the inventories which is there in our hand, we gain uh, some amount uh, when prices move up. And uh, reverse is the case if uh, prices uh, correct. Uh, so, can you just quantify the inventory gains that we had during this quarter? It's part of the overall uh, business. It is, uh, 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 unless it, there is a very sharp uh, gain, because the, these are all uh, normal uh, movement of caprolactam, and it would depend at what point we bought the material. So, uh, these cannot be quantified. Okay, okay thank you. And that's true. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. As we have no further questions, I would like to hand it over to the management for closing comments. Thank you. So we thank you everyone uh, for joining the earnings call. Hope uh, you, uh, we were able to give the answers to your queries and to your satisfaction. If you have any further question or would like to know more about the company, please reach out to our Investor Relations Manager at Velarum Advisors. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Century Income Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect